Welcome, dear advisors, to our first colony under the Scorching Queen. Long may she reign. We are very important people, but I will have that explained to you now. The world is plagued by the Blight Storm, a vile cycle of destruction ravaging everything in its path. The only safe haven is the smoldering city where the mysterious Scorched Queen reigns. Yes, you long may she reign. You are one of her viceroys, a pioneer sent into the wilds, tasked with establishing new settlements and acquiring valuable resources for the crown. Your goal is to help rebuild the smoldering city and secure the future of the Queen's subjects. Yes. And we shall do just as that guy demanded, for we hold the fate of not just humans, but all kinds of races in our hands. Oh, yeah, but of course we have to deal with the envoy first. And if you haven't heard how he, he if you haven't heard how he sounds, just have a listen. He sounds something like this. Use the WASD or the mouse to move the camera. Yes. We will do that. Neglecting your village will increase the queen's impatience and bring her wrath upon you. Yep. Fulfilling your duties will increase the town's reputation, unlock new buildings, and eventually bring you to victory. Which we will be doing every time, of course, no matter how hard it gets. Now choose a new blueprint. Select the crown icon below. Each expedition starts with only a few essential blueprints. More will be given to you as you earn reputation points. Now pick the woodcutter's camp. We will do just that. Press space to resume. Yes. Okay, might pause it again. Build a woodcutter's camp and explore the forest. You have to keep the fire going at all times. Yep, we will do just that. Excellent. We can do a woodcutter's camp. Um, there's a couple of glades around us. I generally like to go for the dangerous glades early, but in this tutorial segment, in this first encampment, they don't want us to do that, so I will just go for this glade. It's the closest to the warehouse, so there will be the least travel time. And I will, of course, build a road. It's free and just increases the movement speed to and from the warehouse. But I will up the priority. And I'm holding shift to make sure that all buildings get this increased priority. Yes. Oh, also, I want higher speed. 3x speed, please. Now work. Ah, and we have, oh, we have our first order. And it requires us to have two woodcutter camps. I'm already on top of that. And gather 10 wood. Yes. So, when I shift click before clicking this guy, it fills it up with the same kind of people. And what I just did was fill it with beavers, because beavers work doubly as efficient as the other races. They have a 10% chance of doubling their yield, whereas the humans, they can just do it, I guess. And I have the order ready to complete. Excellent. This means I get a new blueprint for shelters. Shelters are housing. I have 12 people. 6, 7, 8, 9, 12. So, these fill for three people each. Oh no, I've made a huge mistake. Luckily, you can move buildings. There we go. And please cut those down specifically so I can get into this glade. And I need to do two glades. And have more beavers as woodcutters. All oh, right, I got some more beavers. No reason to keep humans in woodcutting. The Amazing. beavers are better. Another glade is... This is quite a big one. But this one over here is closer to my... Storage area. So I prefer to do that one. What do we have over here? We have some eggs. Some roots. And that's all. Excellent, excellent. I will be with you again in a second. There we have it. The next glade has been discovered. Only has root deposits, but that is two of two glades. What is my next order? My next order is to build a small foragers camp. 
small vegetable field. Since this is a tutorial, I'm guessing I get the small forages camp here, which I do. You can see I can do the roots, so I can do the vegetables. I'm just going to do the vegetables for now. I'm also always targeting the buildings in the di direction of the good, because whoever I get to work the building, I want them to have as little movement between the building's opening and the good as possible. Because they harvest one of these at a time, sometimes two when they're human and have double chance of doubling their yields because the specialization bonus is farming. But this still means that the vegetables that will fill up to 10, so they'll do more trips in this short distance than they will five at a time going to deliver it to the workshop itself. Yes. Also, I have more people doing nothing. So since the only thing I can do right now is small forages, I'll just do a couple extra. Why not? We can always tear them down again later. Then I will ask my beavers to begin working in the direction of the dangerous glade, because at some point they will ask us to go there, no doubt. Since those are way more important to do than random small glades. More humans, more humans, there we go. This is a tutorial to mark the trees for harvest. We are now moving into our first clearance season. Oh, right. I already have this done. Excellent. So now I want they want me to do a stone cutters camp and get some clay from these deposits here. Same deal as with the other camp. Oh right, I have to get it. Stone cutters camp here. Grab the clay. Build a little bit more road so that it goes a little faster. And it's done. Just put I don't need quite this many people doing random stuff. I keep a builder around because I want more of this path to be done. Right, I'm allowing to burn my coal. Usually I would turn off the coal burning because I want the coal to be useful for blade events. Stonecutter's camp is done. We're going to accept more... Humans, because I have some things here where the humans are actually more efficient and I'm already full up on beavers and these. So the next thing to do is to get a harvester's camp and harvest some plant fiber. We can do that as well. Again, always turning it towards the plant fiber. out of parts that's okay i can always just tear down something i have no one who is actually going to be more efficient at doing this so i'm just gonna put two random people in there And I don't quite want them to actually open up the Dangerous Glade yet, because I don't know if I will have what it takes to, you know, deal with the event that's in there. There's always an event in the Dangerous Glades in opposition to the smaller glades here, that are oftentimes without any events. Order's ready to complete. My next order is to, well, make stuff in the crude workstation. I can do that. This crude workstation gonna be your friend forever I, do, I usually like to place it on the other side of the warehouse but that's not always possible so I'll just place it as close as possible to it and who do we not care for I'm going to destroy this harvester thing so that I have a couple builders to work with and usually in the storm he will take a hit to their satisfaction but it's not a big problem Right now, I don't want it doing pipes. I only want it using this, I want it using this, and I want it using this. That's fine. We're just moving as quickly as we can through this. So, it will take a little while before those two people are done with making four of each. So, I will be right back when they are. Oh, right. One thing that just popped up, 
it's uh, every time you pass a storm, you get to choose a new cornerstone. Or as the Queen's envoy puts it, No one can weather the storm alone. The Queen offers you a cornerstone that will lay the foundation for your town's prosperity. Choose wisely, as you won't be able to change it. Yes. And so, I'm just gonna go for the one that's easily the best here, because I just want them to be done with this faster. So they now work doubly as fast in this group workstation. If you're interested in where you can see your cornerstones as the game progresses, they are behind me. They are over here, lots of cornerstones. I usually don't check them out, I just remember them as I find them, so I figured that was the best place to put the camera. Move up them closer, move up them closer, and a couple more planks, there we go. So the last thing we are to do is to go into the dangerous glade, Prince strolls to fabric in the ancient shrine and deliver an ancient tablet. We're going to do just that. I will ask my our beavers to come over here and put us path through this forest. This actually gets us housing, that's very nice. We have the most humans, so I'm just gonna grab a human house. We're not gonna place it because we're gonna win in a second, but it's nice that we have that option. You can even see they're supposed to go They're supposed to go beyond this blue mark to actually get happy so that you can um, gain reputation points passively from their happiness. But to make sure that you don't get it this way this tutorial, they have put that happiness marker all the way up in the top. So you can't get it. Okay, we're doing it with wood. Oh, let's do it with planks. And we're doing it with the fabric. And we're going to get the ancient tablet. Let's see here. Uh, just grab one from each of these, just to make sure that we do yep. this a little faster. We still won't be fast enough, because this is made so that you can see what a threat does. This one specifically is going to kill three of my people in 17 seconds. And as you can see, it will take 20 seconds before it actually works. There it goes. Dead people. Annoying, but it's done now. And when that lizard has taken the ancient tablet, I will click this. And we will successfully have done for the Scorch Queen our first colony. Isn't that just wonderful? And we have unlocked access to a lot of these standard things, the woodcutters camps and stuff, so we don't have to gain them through reputation anymore. This is excellent. Excellent. Oh, here's the next tutorial. Press any key to start. Villagers with low resolve will start leaving, increasing the queen's impatience. Keeping resolve exceptionally high will grant passive reputation over time. Satisfying your villagers' needs with complex food, homes and services will increase their resolve. Each species has a different mix of needs. It's hard to please everyone all at the same time. Farmers can plant only on farm fields and they can, these can only be built on fertile soil. Crops are planted in the first season, drizzled and harvested during the second season clearance. Build a farm, harvest grain, and serve some ale in a tavern. We will do just that. Whoop. You know the drill. We are going to start by building a couple of woodcutters. See if there are any interesting glades about. There's a big one over here. Uh, but we might not need it for this simple playthrough. So we're just going to do two woodcutters, probably into this small glade, get some wood, get this going. Small farm. It's excellent. Ugh. I guess this is the best place. I hate when I can't place it somewhere where it doesn't overlap with some of the farm fields, but we'll take it. Build soil on the farm fields. And go. Go. 
fill it up with beavers if possible. Oh. Ah, it just tells me to do the thing. To do the same thing down here. Bomb. Ah. And fields. There we go. Yo. Humans can work there. The woodcutters came to shelters. Makes sense. Uh -huh. Let's get a bit of to here. In fact, I am going to pull back these lizards for now because I'd like them to work on these fields. So that these farmers can actually get planting before we get into the next season where they can't plant. What do you have for us, Queen? More goods? Five barrels per minute. We are going to be making ale. Ale is probably needing something to be contained in. We are going to go with the five barrels per minute. And I will go ahead and start the building of a couple of shelters. Oh, I can't do shelters yet? Oh, okay. I have to get the shelter. Very special privilege. You get to house your people. Nice. I'll just build a little path here because it works good. Builder priority. I should still have one builder. I can now open these so I can see what my people get happy about. So we have the basic housing need, which is going to get built as these shelters build up. We have specified housing needs, so if I give the humans human housing, they will be even happier than just having basic housing. They have some food they prefer. Three different things. Generally biscuits, porridge and pie for the humans. Biscuits, pickled goods. I guess it's just pis biscuits and pickled goods for the beavers. And just jerky and skewers and pie and pickled goods for the lizards. I guess they are different amounts of different needs. Humans like clothing, as do beavers. Lizards don't need it. Oh. We have completed this, of course. The next one is to get a small trapper's camp and some meat. I'm guessing we're going to get that small trapper's camp. Okay, let's see if we can... Hey, beavers, come over here and clear some trees for me. Because I would like a little bit of space there. Beavers. And we'll be right back. Newcomers. Always nice. I would like some more lizards, and I would like more lizards because I want them to work the Travers camps where they're proficient. And this is also very nice. When I click a node, I get to click the camp directly from there. Thank you. Now go back here, please. Ah, right. Um. Options for woodcutters camps. They are normally on fill all trees. I have specifically in my settings asked them to not open glades unless I mark the, those glades to be opened. I just find that this is very much better because your serfs are stupid and will not know when to open and when not to open glades. We are here to serve the queen's will, not to get overwhelmed by some silly, silly glade event. Efficient lizards. They'll start hunting there. I have humans in both these. There we go. Thank you. What is my next option? Smokehouse. Meat and do some jerky. We can definitely do that. Hmm. I guess this is the place I have the best space for it. The jerky recipe can be done with meat or with insects. I'm okay with both. I don't need pottery right now. I don't need incense right now. Let's just do it. We have one lizard remaining. And as you can see, there are two different bonuses here. The lizard gains both because lizards like warmth. It makes them comfortable. It makes them happier. And lizards like meat or they are proficient working with meat. So you can see this one has an extra from being comfortable or it has two extra and it has two extra because one of them is in here 
and one of them is in the ancient hearth where they are also comfortable. Now for our first storm season. Nothing really changes. People become a little bit more unhappy. As we get into more difficult settlements, this will be a much bigger problem and there will be some actual choices to be done. Do I have a lizard in any of these? Yeah, I do. More lizards in the smokehouse, please. I just want this to be done. I will be right back when we have 20 turkey in the smokehouse. Okay, I lied. I'm back now because I want to do one of these two things. And I think we are producing more than enough grain. I don't think we need to do the stacking increase. But in longer games, I will definitely do this. Because every 25 times, this will hugely increase the grain production over time. But I want to produce the ale that we're supposed to produce at the end of this very quickly. So I'm going to pick the efficient brewing. Work faster, serves. The Scorched Queen waits for no one. Excellent. There we go. I know about food. Brewery. Enable barrels. Do some ale. Excellent. Let's do just that. Um, I guess we're placing it here. Then with some extra road access. Oh, yes. You can see I can get the barrels. We have already have a hundred barrels. That's excellent. You can do it with the grain. I don't care about any of the other two. I just want you to produce beer when you're doing that. And we have newcomers. I want the one with the more humans because humans were humans like working here. They like brewing. That makes them comfortable. All of these things are things I know because I am a great and wise viceroy. See? Happy humans. Very, very happy humans. Uh, nothing interesting. I mean, there's generally nothing interesting in glades that aren't the dangerous glades. So we will take that. Yeah, just do some random trees. I don't care what specific trees you take. And there we go. We now have ale. We are now learning about services because we have to deliver that ale somewhere. And that somewhere is going to be tavern. We'll have this one nice and close to the housing. Again, I build roads because they can always be torn down and they are speedy. People don't actually visit the top, the tavern. The, the service buildings aren't getting traffic. So it doesn't matter where you place them. Generally, I would place them at least one close to the heart, but they can be placed anywhere you like. But do I not have the materials for this? Were I supposed to actually build a, somewhere where I can build materials? Let's do just that. Good workstation. Here we go. I don't care about pipes. I care about bricks. I only care about tanks for now, actually. Right? No, I do care about those as well. Well, newcomers? Hmm. I need a little bit of diversity. I have one place for a dwarf here and one place for a lizard here. And that fills that out nicely. And here we go, dear advisors. The tavern is now built. I'm going to populate it with humans. Uh, I guess I don't need both of you in here because I'd like to do all three there because that activates the effect. You can see if I have at least three people working here, I get the effect. The effect of the tavern is that I get plus three to global resolve. My lizards are about to become happy and actually give me some reputation on their own. It's very nice. And I think my humans are going to become happy as well when they get their max bonus of plus 8 from the alcohol that's gonna get, gonna get served. Very nice. Where do I have to be working? Humans here, humans here, humans here. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. That's all of them. They're all in either where they're productive, which I prefer, or where they're happy, which is a priority to, I guess. And you can see as they are, when they take a break from farming or whatever, they come here to the ancient hearth. 
and there they eat and they fulfill their leisure if it's possible. So here they are happy because they get the drink. What will you give me? Plus two meat every time. Well, no one's going to die or leave in this one. I'm going to go with the nets. Excellent. I now have a tavern. What's my next one? I have... The beavers still have a long way to go to being happy, so I'm just going to do the human house to make the humans even more happy. We're going to build one, two, three, four, because they can hold two each and we have eight humans. I mean, I guess we could take more humans, but we don't need anyone else right now. Give them resolve, already done. Deliver packs of provisions. That is probably what they want us to do with the makeshift post. It's also an important part of doing this game. Uh, building colonies, that is. Newcomers are waiting, I know. I'm actually getting so much reputation that I might not actually get around to getting this built before I win. We will see. It's built. I would like to use the meat to make packs of provisions. The last two builders can do that. And we'll see what comes first. Either our reputation or that we actually gain 10 packs of provisions so that we in here can deliver them and gain that last reputation we need. But I think we might just see a situation where we people are happy. So we're going to win because they're happy. Excellent. And this unlocks even more buildings for us. And we leveled. How nice. Which unlocks more different cornerstones that we can find. And some extra buildings. And some citadel upgrades. So that's exciting. The world is a vast, ever-changing place, and at its heart lies the smoldering city. Enter the smoldering city and use the resources you've gathered so far to buy the Obsidian Archive Level 1 upgrade. I shall do as you say, envoy, for the queen. So, we are in here in the city, and we have the Obsidian Archive, so with this upgrade, our queen will be less impatient with us, and... We will unlock access to beats, which are a way of looking at all of the achievements we do in the course of our career as Viceroys. The world is governed by the eternal blightstorm cycle. We know about this in Why are you still telling us this? It is almost upon us, so no caravans are allowed to embark. Press the button in the lower right corner of the screen to finish the cycle. What do you mean? I, I can see here that we only took a year for this and a year for that. We have all of this bar left before it becomes Blightstorm cycle time. Whatever you say, we're going to end the cycle. Protect us, O oh Queen. And see, this is why our Queen is magnificent. He protect us during all the Blightstorm cycles. And I will hear not a single negative word. We are going to avoid corruption and serve Her Majesty proudly for the next... Oh, right. Uh, <clears throat> envoy. <clears throat> um, your goal as a Viceroy is to reach the ancient seals with your caravan and reforge them, pushing back the Blightstorm. Yes. You're almost ready to venture out on your own. Choose any map pile inside your embarkation range to begin. Yes. Anyways. So our goal is to find these seals and, uh, well, reseal them so that the blight storm is pushed back and we can enjoy more prosperous times as a civilization. Okay, we have a bunch of choice now. So this will be the end of the tutorial bit, the first couple colonies, and this will be our first actual colony. So I will see you in the next one where we start our first colony as viceroys.